So it is about 5.05 .05 a.m. right now. I've been in Yosemite for a couple days and probably the best way to describe this place is just absolutely overwhelming. There's so many different kind of iconic spots that you, you want to hit when you're on your first, uh, first trip here. And you know, I really don't have enough time. I'm on a family vacation. I know I mentioned that in last week's video. And I don't have enough time really while I'm here to try and really kind of dig into a specific location to try and find you know unique spots. So I can't, you're kind of just forced, at least I'm kind of forced to just go into these iconic spots, which is fine. The spots are absolutely incredible, but there's so many of them, and it's just the feeling of um, being overwhelmed is uh, is quite abundant right now. But this place is just absolutely incredible. I'm at, um, at Tunnel Viewpoint right now. And uh, I know I mentioned in last week's video about trying to get a unique perspective. I got the, uh, the, the Sony 100 to 400 on now. There's really no, no clouds in the sky, so the sunrise is going to be pretty bland. So I'm going to try and get some telephoto shots of possibly some, some sun rays coming into the valley here and just trying to eliminate as much of the sky as possible because it's just not going to be that interesting. So we'll see what happens here in the next uh, 30 minutes as the sun rises. So what I'm hoping for is that some of that, some of the mist down there in the valley is going to continue to grow a little bit, add a little bit of additional atmosphere, because I definitely can't rely on anything in the sky to provide any interest at all. So um, hopefully that'll continue to build. And, and as the sun rises up, hopefully it'll cast some light down there into the valley, maybe a little bit on Brattleville Falls out there on the right as well. So uh, I think we are, Probably about 10 minutes from sunrise. So, uh, fingers crossed we'll get some of that um, direct light into the valley, maybe illuminate some of that mist. And uh, I'm not really sure what to expect, but that's at least what I'm hoping for right now. So I had to abort mission from uh, the video at Tunnel View. If you've ever been to Yosemite in the summertime, this place is an absolute madhouse. There was, uh, I don't know, maybe 100 people showed up there, and I'm way too awkward of a guy to try and do these types of uh, videos in front of a bunch of people so ended up capturing uh, quite a few images there it, the sunset or sunrise wasn't uh, anything spectacular i did get a couple of images where there was some uh, nice light on the on the valley floor but um, nothing super spectacular we'll see when i get back and uh, start to edit the photos but i drove a little bit down the way to a bridal veil falls but i think you can probably see in the background here which I think is one of the, the best waterfalls in uh, in Yosemite and I'm going to capture a couple of these images while the the light is uh, is pretty soft there's not a lot of harsh light because there's no clouds in the sky so wherever there is light right now it's about 645 the light's going to be pretty harsh so the the available options at this time of day right now are pretty limited so this right here is going to be one of the best spots because there's just really no direct light on the falls right now. So that's the composition I have right now. I'm using the, uh, the 100 to 400 millimeter lens again, which I'm really enjoying. And I'm zoomed in only at uh, 100 millimeters. I think I'm at a f8, 1 30th of a second, trying to freeze a little bit of motion in the waterfalls. But it's a fairly simplistic composition which I, uh, is one of my favorite things about this lens. You can just really isolate your subject, remove distractions, and just kind of get those uh, more intimate shots. But I'm really liking the way that this one's turning out. So I'm playing with different shutter speeds right now. I'm at F8, 1 50th of a second, ISO 160. I bumped the ISO up just a little bit because I don't want to open up my aperture anymore and I'm trying to freeze the action in the, in the water, falling water a little bit more. I'm trying to get away from smoothing the water out too much because I think it loses this kind of a grandiose nature. And I think freezing the water a little bit kind of makes the waterfall look a little bit more ferocious, kind of creates a little bit more scale. So I'm just trying to uh, figure out exactly what's the perfect shutter speed. I don't, want to act, I don't want to completely freeze the water. I want to show a little bit of motion, but I also don't want it to be too milky smooth. And I think 1 50th of a second 
think that might be the best option for me right now. And when I take the images, I always like to zoom in on the water just to kind of see exactly what it looks like. I was going to change locations, but then I zoomed all the way into the base of the falls and I really like the way that the, the pine trees in the very center, right down here at the bottom, are kind of silhouetted, silhouetted against the, uh, the white of the waterfall. I really like the, the kind of the, the, the contrast that that provides and I'm using a really fast shutter speed here, 1 60th of a second, f8 ISO 320, because I really want to freeze the other uh, water in, uh, in this situation. Let me turn the, the focus peaking off so you can see it a little bit better. But I'm pretty happy with the way this one's turning out. This is the most recent image right here. And uh, just something a little bit different. It's kind of what I had in mind for this Yosemite trip, just uh, the more intimate detailed shots. So I was over here yesterday scouting areas out and I found this pretty amazing view. I think that's Cathedral Rocks up there. And there was all these kind of like lavender fields in front of it right through here. And I was thinking that that would make a great sunrise location. I think I got a good view of the mountain I want to photograph right now. Now I just got to find those lavender fields for wherever they were. I don't quite see them anymore. So I'm going to keep searching over here. I think I just found them right over here. Or here's some of them kind of scattered all over the place. There's no real order with them, but I do think that makes them for pretty good foreground interest. So we are greeted with another morning of cloudless skies. So um, I was looking for those kind of lavender plants and flowers. I really couldn't find any uh, lined up with the, um, I think that's the Cathedral Rocks or Three Brothers. I'm not 100% sure exactly which formation that is. But I wasn't able to find lavender plants that actually lined up directly with it. So I'm not going to be able to use any kind of foreground. And I've been struggling trying to find foreground while at Yosemite. So um, I had to abort that mission, but I do like this, this composition behind me and this, uh, the, uh, the rising sun should light up the side of the, uh, the mountains in the, uh, the background. So it should provide some, uh, some nice side light. There really isn't any kind of mist or fog or atmosphere or anything like that to um, kind of help the composition out. And of course, as I mentioned, there's no clouds. So we're gonna try and just, uh, which has kind of been the theme throughout the majority of my trip here, is to try and eliminate as much of the sky as possible, maybe try and zoom in a little bit, focus more on the, on the trees to the left and the right of the mountain to kind of frame my shot up at least. That's my thinking right now. So um, I think we have, it's about 5.15 a.m. now. I think maybe 20-ish minutes before the sun actually rises. So uh, we got a little bit of time to tweak the composition. So if I look at, if I'm using photo pills, there's, uh, there's my composition more or less right there. And it looks like the sun is rising to the right of me. And then by the time it gets up a little ways, it should cast light right up there to the top of the, of the mountains. At least that's the, uh, that's the thinking I have right now. Here is the, uh, the composition that I have right now. Turn the focus peaking off. So that's the composition right now. I'm pretty happy with it. I like how the trees kind of frame the, uh, the, the, the mountains in the backgrounds of the main subject. I really wish there was some of those kind of lavender fields across or lavender flowers all the way across here. That would make for some nice interest, but you got to sometimes work with what you got. So now really we're just gonna, I'm just kind of perfecting my composition and just gonna wait for the light to uh, hit the side of the mountain. I changed my composition to slightly. I moved forward a little bit and to the right some. I wanted to eliminate that tree because there's not a tree of that size on the opposite side to kind of balance the image so the image felt a little bit uh, lopsided to me and now i'm using the tree right there and the tree of equal size on the right side and i feel like that kind of balances the image a little bit more so i'm, I'm really zoomed past this tree right here and i kind of like the way that that composition works a little bit better with the uh, the mountains in the uh, the background kind of framed between two similar size trees at least that's the, the logic that i'm thinking right now 
So right now I'm shooting at f11 1.6 second shutter speed ISO 100. That shutter speed is certainly going to decrease as the sun starts to rise. But I'm hoping we get a little bit of warm light on these ferns in the foreground, maybe on that fallen tree in the midground, and of course the mountain in the background. But I really like the, the layers and the depth in this photograph framed by the, the two trees on the left and right. I'm bracketing my shots right now, which is usually standard practice for me whenever there's uh, extreme areas of lightness and darkness, a lot of dynamic range. I like to bracket those images just in case so I have them if I decide to use them once I get back home. If not, I can just throw them away, but I'll, at least I have them when I, uh, in just in the event that I possibly need them. I'm just playing with different shutter speeds right now. The, I'm down to uh, less than half a second uh, exposure time, so the ambient light is definitely increasing. And I'm just kind of working the composition a little bit, zooming in some, zooming out a little bit. These kind of micro adjustments left and right, up and down with the, uh, the camera angle. Just trying to get the trees framed up around the mountain as perfectly as possible. And trying to eliminate those kind of little white areas that become a distraction in the sky between, between trees. So just trying to eliminate that and figure out the best way to kind of keep the composition as clean as possible because it is a, a somewhat of a busy scene and just trying to create a little bit of order kind of makes the image look a little bit more, uh, more calming in my opinion. Well, the sun is up. It's going to take a little bit of time, though, for the sun to rise high enough to get over the, the mountains in the background and, and start to show, uh, you know, splash the side of the mountain with uh, light and hopefully catch these trees as well. So we got a little bit longer to wait, but not much. You can really see it now. It's really starting to come through. Nice light up there. But it's definitely moving quick. You can really see that light line starting to drift down. There was no light up there just maybe just three or four minutes ago and now it's almost all the way down the extreme peaks of the mountain so it's definitely uh, it's definitely going to uh, move quick. You gotta love when you fill up an SD card right in the middle of the, uh, the good light. Perfect timing Mark. Way to go buddy. The light's here. Now it's on the, uh, the right side of the very uh, peak in the front so we have light on all three of the peaks it's amazing what just a little bit of light will do to an image wish there was a little bit of clouds but we are getting some nice uh, atmospheric glow up there which is adding a lot to the image as well so can't get everything you hope for but this is uh i would say a pretty good constellation prize i'm really happy with the way it's coming out There isn't any issue with the audio from your computer or the audio from your phone. There was, however, an issue with the audio being recorded on my microphone in this final clip. I'm not 100% sure exactly what transpired here. I didn't even notice it until I was on my flight home two days ago when I was editing the video that I discovered that the final clip doesn't have any audio tied to it. So that was a bit of a bummer, but I am glad or fortunate that, uh, or thankful, I should say, that it was the final scene of the, uh, of the video. Could have been a lot worse. But I wanted to show you the, uh, the image from the final shoot. And here it is right here. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I think this is the best image from the group. There are a couple things I wish were a little bit different. When I was on location, I didn't even notice this area right here. But it just happens to be the way this tree is shaped that it kind of created this uh, umbrella effect that uh, it's just ultimately made this entire kind of big blob of shadow area and now every time I look at this photograph my eye immediately is drawn to this area so that's kind of a distracting element and then how the tr this tree right here is breaking the uh, mountain line right here I noticed that when I was on location, but it was one of those things, there was nothing I could do to solve for that, no matter how high I lifted my tripod or, or lowered the tripod or shifted left or shifted right. It was just one of those things that I just couldn't solve for. So I really just had to shoot it the way it was. And then of course the lavender flowers. So here are some of the lavender flowers right here, but the area about 50 yards to the left just had thousands of these flowers. And it was like a purple carpet that was laid out all the way to the tree line before the mountains. And that would have been perfect for this image. But unfortunately that area did not have a clear view of the Three Brothers Peak. So I had to shift over here. But thankfully there was this down tree right here that I was able to use as a little bit of a foreground interest. So I'm glad that was there. 
And this is one of the images that I zoomed in a little bit eliminating the ferns in the immediate foreground because when I got it back in post, the ferns just looked too sloppy, too chaotic. There was no organization to it. It was just too sporadic and it just served as a, another distracting element to the photograph. So I ended up going with an image that didn't have any of the ferns in it. And I think it looks a lot better that way. So overall though, I, I, I like the photograph. It's not one of my favorites, but I think it's, a, I think it's pretty good. But that my trip to Yosemite was absolutely fantastic. I, uh, I am already missing it. I can't wait to return. And if you've never been there before, I highly recommend you heading out to California to, to, to give Yos Yosemite a visit. If, um, and I hope you really enjoyed this week's video as well. It definitely wasn't easy to make. I'm not used to filming around near that many people. So it was, a, it was definitely a, a very odd feeling, but I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, if you could give it a thumbs up, it definitely helps out the channel and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video and I'll see you next week. Bye.